everyone, welcome back. It's Moe, K Swedish Whiskey Girl, and today we're gonna have a little look at Springbank 12. This is, of course, a cast strength expression. It sits at 55.3% ABV, and it can be quite a limited release, and I've seen that it's sold out in quite a lot of places now, because they do do this expression in batches, I believe in yearly batches, so this one would have been the 2020 release which has been matured in 65% bourbon casks and 35% sherry casks. Springbank is of course a bit of a special distillery. It's a family owned distillery and they are one of the very few distilleries to this day that are of course family owned and, and they seem to really like doing things in their own way. They are quite classic and traditional. They still do all of their production on site, which is quite incredible. So 100% of their whiskey process is happening on their site in Campbelltown. Campbelltown is of course located on the peninsula of Kintyre here in Scotland. It's its own region, even though it has only three distilleries. And it's the Mitchell family that owns Springbank and still does to today. And I believe it's in this fifth generation in the family now. And of course, the same of the own Springbank distillery also own Glengyle, and except for Springbank, they also release Longrow and Hazelburn as their expressions as well. They are also one of very few distilleries that actually do their maltings on site. So they do traditional maltings where you spread the barley out on a malting floor to let it germinate, and you have to leave it there, and then yeah, it's. It's a fascinating process and I mean if you do want to see a really traditional distillery I think this would be a good one. I haven't managed to get to Campbelltown just yet but I hope to be able to go soon. But in the meantime we're gonna try this nice little dram here and of course a thank you to Ali for giving me a wee sample to try. Let's start by having a look on the nose. Can definitely get that it's cast strength straight away but it does have this dense fruitiness that is the first thing you notice it feels quite dark quite dark and dense a bit of that wine cellar vibe alongside a big fruitiness like a quite a, a fresh fruitiness a bit of kind of orange some pears, that kind of freshness. But definitely like stepping down into a wine cellar and you get this kind of earthy vibe. But the earthiness is more this kind of alcohol earthiness that you get in a warehouse and then it's the fresh fruitiness. It does make me think of like slightly darker colours, like a kind of darker orange or darker purple vibe. Now we're of course gonna have a little sip of this and then I'll try it with a bit of water afterwards. So slanjava. It has a lovely flavour, it's quite juicy. And then on the finish, it has a bit of a drying spice sensation. Like almost the feeling you get when you've had cinnamon and you might have had slightly too much cinnamon and it leaves like a little bit of a dry spot on your tongue. Still very fruity. But it also has a, a big sweetness to it that makes me think of um, like wine gums. Like a bit of a candy, fruity candy sweetness. almost like the red wine gums but it's it still has a bit of that orange touch and almost orange touch and almost a bit of kind of charred orange peels because it has a charry sensation to it it's more of a kind of charry bitterness very warming very big still quite easy to sip at 55.3% ABV but it's Almost like the alcohol is hiding some of the aroma slightly. Feels a little bit more oaky on the nose now. Mm. 
a little bit of a fiery spice like cinnamon, almost chilli as well. Quite okay, but with that wine gum sweetness. Let's add some water. And we'll have a little look on it after that. It came a little bit lighter with the water, like more fruity, but also a little bit more floral. Less of that wine cellar murky darkness, more of like a, almost like a springtime kind of lavender, just a hint of it. And almost a greener fruit, so maybe a little bit more apple in there as well. But still very, very big aromas on the nose. A little bit fresher on the palate initially, and then more of the kind of drying oak comes in. Like it's a big kind of oaky punch. So the way kind of it feels is that you get this kind of burst of fresh fruits that are slightly greener now and then it just kind of washes over with more like the oakiness just grows and grows and leaves a little bit more of a drying sensation but it's more oak dry than malty dry if that makes sense. So almost uh, it reminds me of opening a bag of wine gums on the nose. Less wine gums on the palate. The oakiness is almost a little bit too much right now. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more water and just see what happens, if that will change anything. Maybe it's just that kind of medium way. Ooh, I'm very pleasant on the nose now, it's like, just like a little burst of fruits. Almost like those um, soft, like they're soft sweets. Are they called like starbursts, I think, here in the UK? They're like chewy little fruit sweets. And yeah, it almost knows, like it has a kind of candy vibe. But let's have another taste. Now it feels more pear aromas, more like kind of freshness. It did tone down the oak a bit, which is much more pleasant. I think where I was having it there in the middle, it just made it so dry and so... I mean, if you like oak, then that's brilliant. But it just, because that big fruitiness was so pleasant on the first initial, like, introduction, I kind of wanted more of it. And it, it does feel, uh, flavour-wise, like it would have been really pleasant, almost like it would have been like these lovely first full bourbon casks that would have been influenced. I'm not sure entirely what cask they have used, but it does give me that sensation, the really kind of big fruitiness and the lovely the juiciness and that kind of, oh, how to describe it, but this kind of orange, pear, almost wine gum influence that makes me think of what you can get from a really nice kind of first full cask influenced whiskey um specifically ex bourbon casks which does make it seem like something that really suits my palate which is why i'm so happy that adding a little bit more water kind of brought it out even more I mean, the oakiness is still there. It's just slightly landed a bit more. I 
sounds slightly oily my feel it does feel quite kind of dense which I think is why so many people like it and of course Campbelltown whiskey sometimes can be slightly known for being quite oily um, and maybe a little bit coastal as well but I would of course love to hear what you think of Springbank. Do you like Springbank? Do you have a favourite in their range? Have you tried this 12 year old cast strength or have you tried one of their previous releases perhaps, the previous batches? Please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course if you like what I'm doing here on YouTube and my other social channels I'd be absolutely over the moon if you consider using my affiliate links with either Master of Malt, the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society or the Whiskey Exchange the next time you're shopping with them. All of those links are of course in the description here below as well as links to my website, my Patreon, my Teespring shop and my Instagram if you're curious about that. As always a massive thank you to my wonderful supporters on Patreon, I'm so grateful you want to continue to support me on my whiskey journey. But I hope you've all had an absolutely wonderful day. Slanjava, skoala.